players, what are the weirdest quests that you've done? Make sure to leave your weirdest quest down in the comment below. DM here. I recently sent my players off on a quest to find a treasure in a small dungeon. Pretty standard, yeah? It was the treasure of Ricardo Roland, and every step of the way was a prank or trap or both. And when they got to the end of the dungeon, there was a large treasure chest with nothing but a note inside that said, the real treasure was the friends along the way. After leaving, they found a crystal that started playing a certain troll song when interacted with. Let's just say that they're never going to give up this treasure, and it's never going to let them down. Better believe it'll never hurt them either. This is going to sound weird, but bear with me because, well, we had to suffer through this, so you can too. Oh, love you too, OP. My son has had us do some very strange quests before in his campaigns, but the one that takes the cake by far has to be the attack of the pedophile pizza. So this comes from my son's Starfinder campaign. Long story short, we, along with about 6,000 other people, ended up in cryosleep for 10,000 years after a failed nanobot experiment essentially wiped out the world and no one was alive to deactivate our cryopods. This was supposed to be just a final test of the cryostasis chambers for 30 days to prove to the world that the technology was ready for mass use. The start of the campaign was our pods entering a safe failure mode after a power outage and deactivating on their own, which freed us from cryo. Fast forward to the present point of the campaign where we've learned that one of the NPCs we've been traveling with is essentially a backup storage device for all the people who were put into cryo chambers, the majority of whom were violent criminals. With the DNA and nanobots of thousands of people inside her, this NPC was, uh, ooh, quite unstable to say the least. She wasn't ever even supposed to exist. But when the cryostasis system wasn't deactivated after the 30-day test run, the computer created a cybernetic person who was an amalgamation of everyone's genetic material and personalities, so the data would still exist if the system went offline. When we were informed of this, we expressed interest in freeing her from these other personalities. While she was a very useful NPC when she was stable, when she would enter an unstable state of mind, she could be downright murderous and violent. That's when we were given the opportunity to interface with her brain through her nanobots and enter her consciousness so that we could delete the other personality stuck inside her by fighting through various simulations in a virtual environment. Along the way, we ended up fighting a giant's pizza slice, which was the virtual representation of the mind of a pedophile who'd been forced into the cryostasis test. So, <laughs> that's how we fought a pedophile pizza. Yes, I'm fully aware that my son has a very strange DMing style, but he definitely keeps us on our toes, that's for sure. Not really a weird quest, but an unexpected one. I play in some sort of West Marshish rebellion campaign, and we had to go catch enemies around our camps for either food or training. So picture this, your character running around killing animals that are edible and throwing balls full of rope to catch enemies like skeletons, alive. You see where I'm getting at? That quest looked a quite a lot like late medieval Pokemon. Also, did I mention the quest was called Gotta Catch Em All? Yeah, lots of fun was had. A quest from last night's session was a bit odd to say the least. My character wasn't watching where he was going and accidentally stepped on a circle of stones, angering a ghost. To appease the spirit and reclaim the fragment of my soul he stole, I had to find the spirit's still living brother and recover a brooch he stole from the spirit's still living wife. I was given an address, which took some figuring out as it was my character's first time visiting a city. Upon reaching the correct location, our party assessed the situation and decided the brother was a suspicious individual. One party member led the guy away to sign for a package and kept him bureaucratically distracted for as long as he could. While the remaining two PCs, myself included, entered his house to search for the brooch. After some magic-based investigation, my friend's familiar found a trap door under a rug. We descended and found a large subterranean warehouse of presumably stolen items, along with three workers who quickly spotted us. My friend downed two of them with sleep spells, and I intimidated the third with, We don't want trouble, but as you can clearly see, we can cause it. We're looking for a brooch. Hand it over, and we leave. 
As it turned out, the brooch was in a nearby wall safe. My friend forced it open with knock and set off the fantasy equivalent of a claymore. I grabbed the brooch from the remains of the safe, my friend healed the workers, and, well, we left. After my friend put a spell on the workers to make them compulsive liars for a few hours. We went back up, closed the trap door, replaced the rug, and left. On our way back to the graveyard where I ran afoul of the ghost, we were accosted by a mysterious and dangerous stranger. During the ensuing battle, I caused a wild magic surge, resulting in my mage armor, the spell that caused the surge, producing a loud, continuous screeching noise. Oh, that's awful. Upon defeating the mysterious stranger, we discovered it was some sort of remotely piloted construct. So, that's something we needed to figure out later. We made it to the graveyard, returned the brooch, recovered my soul fragment, and went back to the inn where we've been staying. It was an interesting day, and I really want to know more about this story, so if you're listening in, please give us more. My players went to a town that had been overrun by rats. They fought rat swarms and the Pumpkin King in an abandoned graveyard that had been planted as a pumpkin patch, hence the possessed pumpkin. Then they gave the bones of the baby they found in a well to its ghost mother. This netted them a bag of magic beans. I was having trouble with stories at this point. Find the mimic and bring it back to the wizard. We were sent to a massive manor and was told there was a singular mimic in there. Well, we spent five in-game days, two sessions, combing through the entire manor until we found that the mimic is hiding as a plank of wood leaning against the garden shed. It's actually kind of clever. Slay a hydra to protect a pet troll. Aw. As dumb as it sounds, we went on a quest to deliver an orb, only to discover that the orb was a snack for a giant turtle. Quest. Topple the country's government. Now, the weird part is what they're using to do so. One guy has a basketball-sized Death Star. One guy has Giga Chad. Someone else has a T-Rex, etc. Needless to say, it's one hell of a campaign. I wouldn't say it's a weird quest, but the results of it were weird. Okay, that still fits. This is multiple years ago, and I was still very new to D&D. I was playing my go-to class, Ranger, high five. At the time, we had spent a week on the ocean traveling to an island prison similar to Alcatraz to get a guy we needed for another quest. We get there and talk to the prison warden. The conversation gets weird and kind of concerning, and one of my party members instinctively shoots the warden in the back of the head and kills him in the room. <laughs> now keep in mind that it was just our party and the warden in his office by himself. After hearing the body drop to the floor, the guards outside the door come in wondering what happened. I don't remember if it was me or another party member who managed to convince the guards that some magical assassin just killed the warden and he's on the loose somewhere in the prison and to let all the prisoners out. As you can guess, chaos ensues almost immediately. The guards are freaking out and all the prisoners are rioting. In the chaos, we find our guy and get out. All while we sail off into the sunset and see the prison on fire in the distance. The DM said, that's not how I wanted or expected that quest to go. This occurred in a homebrew Star Trek game, but I had my players have a training activity on the holodeck where they ran a recreation of the Death Star run from Star Wars. One player was going to be late, so I gave him a special role. When he arrived, the holodeck malfunctioned and the safeties turned off, meaning the players could now die. My late player was allowed to get the alert outside of the holodeck and discovered that, while the simulation couldn't be stopped until the mission was completed, he could edit the simulation in progress to give the other PCs the edge. I forget all of the shenanigans that were being pulled, but when Darth Vader, who was the only enemy left, he was untouchable as per the film until he was taken out by the Millennium Falcon. Cue a hail from the Falcon and me calling out in my best William Shatner voice, you're all clear, kid. Now, let's blow this thing and go home. This was followed by a line from Chewie and Dr. McCoy grumbling about, Damn Wookiee logic. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's just a level one quest from the Book of Challenges. The Book of Challenges, a 3.0 support, where the appropriate quest for a level one group is a chase to recover a fugitive cat that can end in people falling from certain heights as they pile furniture to get the black cat who found refuge on a chandelier. 
Each PC that fell from the impromptu furniture stack would take 3d6 damage. Scratch noise, freeze frame, witch witch ah. Yep, that's us, TPK'd by a bloody cat on the chandelier. Hey everybody, Brian Von Vier here checking in one last time in 2022. I hope everybody out there has been doing well, staying safe, being as happy as they can be. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell, and of course, to leave a comment down below, not only telling us the weirdest quest that you've done, not only trying to beat and brutalize the algorithm gods, but telling all of us how 2022 really went for you. Toodaloo, everybody, and we'll see you in the next brand new year.